evening, viewers. Thank you for staying tuned. Good evening. Good evening, viewers. Thank you for staying tuned to Pan African TV. And thank you for staying tuned to the couch. Today is a Thursday evening. Sorry, today is a Wednesday evening. Ha, ah, lots of mistakes today, huh? Today is a Wednesday evening, and today we are doing a hard talk. You know, if you've been following us, you know that on, on Wednesdays we do we, we have a hard talk. You know, I, I would like to apologize, first of all, for the late start of today's program. You know, I hope I hope you bear with us, you know, and I hope you stay tuned. Thank you for actually staying tuned, even though we are late today. Now, youth unemployment has has been identified as one of perhaps the most important threats to our social political and economic development as a country now statistics would indicate that even though as a country we are very youthful this percentage of people also happens to be the most unemployed you know population in in ghana now this obviously like i said earlier has direct consequences for again our social political and economic developments and 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 this is a situation that i'm not sure any Ghanaian is, is pleased about now for this evening we are discussing youth entrepreneurship now i have two experts with me in the studio to look at this topic perhaps what is you know what can be done about the situation what we are doing perhaps what we are doing wrong and how we can get it better you know so do stay tuned we are discussing youth entrepreneurship now my guests in the studio with me this evening are mr emmanuel awumi now mr awumi happens to be the ceo of Cecil consult limited and an advocate for graduates working in the informal sector also with us in the studio today is mr richard e obin now he happens to be the deputy chief executive officer of the national youth authority so you realize that you know it's it's a full house now gentlemen welcome to the studio You're welcome, welcome thank to the you, studio yeah. thank you for making time to be with us on a wednesday evening now let 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 because we've wasted enough time let's not waste time straight up when we say youth entrepreneurship you know generally broadly what what are we looking at what are we talking about yes um when we talk about entrepreneurship it's much got to do with creativity and innovation how are you able to be creative enough to be able to transform a venture into a money-making venture? An idea that you've been able to come up with and then convert that idea into money-making venture. And so once you're able to convert an idea into a money-making venture, you are good to go into entrepreneurship. Okay. Now, let, yeah. So that's entrepreneurship. Now let's bring the youthful angle to it. So yeah. youth entrepreneurship. Right. Youth entrepreneurship. Now we're talking about the youth being educated. And once you are educated, what next? You need to find something to do. But then the form of orientation we are having through our educational system makes us believe that once we are out of school, we just need a certificate and we should be employed. But then there should be the situation where we should be able to get ourselves employed. Now, to get yourself employed will require innovation and creativity. But the question is, are we being oriented through our educational system to be creative, to be orient, uh, innovative enough such that we can look at a scenario, look into our society, identify problems, and then find solutions to them? Now, if I'm able to identify a problem in my society, in my community, and I find solution to it, someone will be ready to pay for me finding solution to that problem. Mm. By so doing, I'm already in business. Mm. But then, do we have this thing happening among the youth? Mm. All right? But then, our education teaches us that once we are out of school, we are good to go with a certificate. Yeah. And once we have the certificate, we have an entitlement mentality that we need to be employed. Mm. This is where we are getting it wrong. That we need to be employed and we need to be paid because we have a certificate. Mm -hmm. 
and so we fail to want to be innovative enough by looking out for challenges and problems in our society and community finding solutions to them and so what do we do we rather go sit down waiting to get into the formal sector to be employed and also the form of orientation we have makes us believe that it is only the formal sector that we might get employed hmm. and then feel good in society we, we will get into all of that yes. you know i mean we have about an hour to do all right. of this so uh, let me just take you know mr Bain, what, what do you what do you say about youth entrepreneurship before we get into all the areas that mm. Salmi was was taking us into <laughs> okay. Anna, good evening good to evening. you and to your cherished <laughs> viewers um the concept really bring to the fore um the drive the young people develop to want to provide solutions to societal problems and how they organize themselves to achieve that objective of wanting to provide solution to most of society's problems so um, youth enterprise uh, youth enterprise and uh, youth entrepreneurship has so much to do with young persons who identify challenges that we have in society and also work around to resolve those challenges by way of organizing uh, persons and organizing uh, resources to accomplish that objective. Okay, so both of you, you know, gave me basically the same, the same definition, more or less, you know, I mean, different wedding, but same thing. So youth entrepreneurship, ideally, should be about the young person identifying loopholes within the society and filling up those loopholes, you know, to serve society. Exactly. This, this should be what it, what what is, it is or what it should be. Yes. But it has another twist, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's also about the young man mm -hmm. wanting to find a job so that he can better himself, mm -hmm. his family, mm -hmm. you know. And then you know, the great thing that you talk about right. helps society. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, people don't go to school. Perhaps the psychology is upside, stand up on its head. We have our, our psychology backwards. People are not going to school to come out to come and help the society. Mm -hmm. Please correct me if I'm wrong. This, mm -hmm. this is the this is that the atmosphere. When you talk to young people, he wants mm -hmm. to come out. If it's a university, if it's a polytechnic, wherever he wants to come out, find a job, buy a house, buy a car. Mm -hmm. I mean, his life will come later, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is this is this where we are getting it wrong? Uh, uh, For me, perhaps this this is where we should be looking at. Okay. I think this is perhaps the, okay. the, the, the twist. Pen. Yes. And this is exactly where I'm talking about the orientation bit. Why should the youth go through school, come out, and just think that he needs to be employed by someone? What's I mean about the entitled mentality? Entitlement mentality. Now, what is work? Whatever idea you are able to generate whatever problem you are able to identify in society in the community as my boss was saying mm. and you find a solution to it mm. and you are paid for it aren't you working yes you are good but then our form of definition of work means in our society means that i should be sitting behind a desk in a tie in yeah. a suit then i'm called a worker yeah so once i don't find myself in an office seated in my suit under an air condition our society doesn't see it that no. you are working mm -hmm. that is where we're getting it wrong and that is where i'm talking about the orientation bit in school this is how they are orienting us so we've come out as a society believing that this is the only way that when you go into such an industry then you are considered a worker in the Ghanaian society and so we leave the informal sector thinking that it is meant for school dropouts yeah. or those who are not, I mean, well to do in terms of academic, they belong to that sector. And that is where it is, I say it is wrong. For instance, I have gotten my academics through the university, mm. but I went into the informal sector. A job like car wash, do we respect it in our society? No. Exactly. So you will say that it is no work. 
but i have been in the, this industry for 17 good years oh, wow. i have about 45 workers that i'm managing and the standard of work that i'm doing when you go to my website and look at it you realize that it has gone through a lot of value addition hmm. processes that has met international standards okay so i've been able to identify a problem in my society that car wash which is an international business mm. that has a lot of value mm. which is not respected in our society mm. i have added value to it mm. such that a graduate can comfortably walk into my business area to work without having that stigma that society has towards graduate working in the informal sector mm. so we have a societal problem of stigmatization mm. which no graduate wants to have so a graduate will prefer to sit at home rather than being stigmatized working in the informal sector. And so in the out, out of statistics, for instance, we have 91.8% of our total employment labor force working in the, uh, in the private sector. We only have 8.2% working within the public sector. Now, how come should a graduate come out of school expecting that they can all find themselves into the public sector, which has 8.2%. Even if the government creates job opportunities, how many graduates can be employed? Mm -hmm. Now we have about almost 200,000 graduates being churned out every year, mm -hmm. adding to the backlog of graduates that are waiting to get <laughs> into the public sector. How can that be possible? Mm -hmm. The 91.8% is giving us indication that there are enormous job opportunities within the informal sector. Mm -hmm but it's informal because it's not well structured mm. who should structure it it should take the graduate who has been educated to know how to manage and structure things to venture in there apply his knowledge add value to jobs over there and we are good to go so for instance we have unemployed graduate association and i have been saying that that association once you've been able to form that association you are a business person already <laughs> because you've been creative enough to know that putting one or two things and people together you can form an association it is business now i as an entre entrepreneur would rather name it employable graduate association hmm. targeted towards the informal sector why do i say so the entrepreneur in the informal sector it's much of an operational manager. He creates the idea and just focus in how to drive that idea to become a reality. Mm. Now, business constitutes of several tools. You need management administration, you need accounting department, mm. you need marketing, mm. you need branding, mm. you need all the sectors to come together to make the business thrive. Mm. Now, if you the graduate, who have been trained through all this why can't you package yourself and then go to the entrepreneur within the informal sector mm. go manage this aspect mm. of his business for him mm. and so this as association can then become like an incubator where graduates train themselves and then they market themselves to the entrepreneurs go to manage their administrative bit for them mm. and they in business I, 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 I totally totally understand you know everything that you are saying mm -hmm. what what caught my attention perhaps more than everything else you spoke about was structure and this is where i'm going to invite mr obeng to come in considering that he's coming from the national youth authority, authority. authority. Good. okay mr obeng now mr only talks about you know structure who is going to structure it and he says that the the graduates having the knowledge should be able to structure it uh, okay that's great from where i sit Perhaps we need a stronger hand to structure it. And I will come straight at you. Mm. Where's the structure? Because it's, it's the bedrock of everything, isn't it? Sure. If there's no with, structure. With, with the understanding that we have about challenges young entrepreneurs go through, I think uh, as an authority working for young people in Ghana, we understand that it is by designing uh, support mechanisms and support systems that will let them thrive when they set themselves up for businesses. Exactly. And so uh, 
you would if you look around you will find quite a number of support programs for young business or young entrepreneurs you know what i want us to do it's sorry to catch mm -hmm. you but i'm going to take them one after the other okay. you know all of these enterprises that we try jida whatever all of them you know this evening i want to take them one after the other look at them the plan for it where we went wrong mm. and what we could have done this evening i'm not joking with you Kai. today is hard so <laughs> hard so hard so so please continue on the structure yes, yes. but uh, don't it's, bother it's with key. that because you will yes, get, it's, we'll it's, get it's, to that. it's very important that even for the very matured entrepreneur there are a lot of challenges they go through which is why they have set up a lot of agencies and organizations to advocate for them you have the private enterprise foundation which exists to look out for ways to uh, build Guinean businesses you know for adult business owners and of course that does not exclude young business people but the emphasis is on all business owners and a lot more are in the system and these are there to make the statement that Entrepreneurs cannot succeed all by themselves because they work within a system and they work with system. Regulatory frameworks must be looked at from time to time. Absolutely. The challenges they pose to businesses and entrepreneurs, there has to be review from time to time. And all of this, because business are driven by interest, these organizations aggregate all these interests and then seek to provide solutions to some of these uh, structural rigidities mm -hmm. that fight entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Now for the young person, the, the authority, you didn't want me to go there, but at this stage, go I just there. want to, go there. The, the authority with this basic understanding mm -hmm. has a number of programs and the programs provide technical support, uh, administrative support, and financial support to young entrepreneurs. That's technical, administrative, and financial, and financial. So, that's right, okay. that's right. Now, all of these are done to build a great number of young entrepreneurs in Ghana. And it is, again, to address the unemployment situation that we have at hand mm. if you have more young businesses thriving that means more people are going to be guaranteed jobs because the target or the objective of most young businesses are to sustain themselves and mm. to grow mm. with that mindset with that mindset mm. if they hire somebody one can uh, based on that come to the conclusion that they are in for a long run mm -hmm. and so uh, uh, the interest is in promoting uh, and also providing more support systems for young entrepreneurs okay mm -hmm. so let, let, let's come back to the statistic that you know was given earlier you know eloquently by mr awumi and i'm still on you mr watson don't we are, we are so very sorry we, we are not done yet you know he said 91.8 percent i'm no position to doubt his statistics at all 91.8 percent are in the private sector 8.2 percent are in the in the in the public sector so that automatically means that for any graduates coming out from school your target should really be the private sector and that's where you should be aiming at okay great they are the established institutions you know blah 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 but ideally you should be looking to do yours you know, you should be looking to, like he said, fill a void, identify a void and, and, and fill it. Now, back to structure. Let me give an example, basic example. When you travel, you know, you have these huge shops, you know, and I have a friend who always makes this example. You have the test schools, you know, when we talk about basic things like agriculture and how these can employ a chunk of the population. Test schools, they are everywhere. Every corner you turn, test is everywhere. You know, when you come to Ghana, what do we have? You have all these tabletops you know uh, 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 markets you know mini 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 supermarkets along the roads and then there are the markets that nobody's actually even patronized people would rather stand on the roadside and sell now if we had structures we could have these kind of you know chain grocery shops and and the potential there is limitless limitless now as a national youth authority and today i'm on you because 
these are some of the innovations i want to see you come up with these are the kind of things i want you to i want to see you you know perhaps spearheading you know because these are very practical ways we could employ our youth it's it's so important it's good you are on us and i'm also happy to have Mr. Abume here. yes so Abume is we, here said, to you. we said the, 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 the bullets that will be coming yes yes yes, yes 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 um, you see Emma, it is good to build big business but for the young entrepreneur the emphasis has to be on uh, how to sustain small businesses so that over the time SMEs. yes uh, not many can assess the huge capital required to have the 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 walmarts at the age with which these businesses i mean young entrepreneurs so to assess the kind of billions of dollars to have these chains of supermarkets around for a very young person who leaves university or probably didn't even go to university but decided to get into business from his community it's obviously a difficult task for them to assess which is why the emphasis is on how to sustain the very small businesses they start with if you start and you're able to sustain it you are, you are most likely to grow it to have another branch and over time with patience and a lot of lessons and supports uh -huh. um, you would be able to grow your business uh -huh. to probably go beyond the borders of this country this and which country. is what okay. we hope to have which is the kind of situation that uh, we want to support more young entrepreneurs to succeed not only in Ghana but to assess other markets but practically speaking you know that there's so much uh, difficulty assessing the kind of uh, capital that is required uh, to have Walmarts and uh, which one did you uh, the name of the company the you Tesco. mentioned Tesco uh, 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 as a young person I am I am putting emphasis on this just so that a young person would have this understanding that it's okay to start small and want to be like Tesco or Walmart and it doesn't put so much pressure on them to want to uh, uh, do things that will suddenly uh, put them in the same league as Walmart and Tesco which you and I, I, I have, know I have a lot of difficulty with, difficulties with that but not just I want you to think about it for a bit you know, you know just think about it we'll take a break when we come back I'll come back and you know and start firing mm. <laughs> <laughs> well viewers we'll take a quick commercial break I just want to be right back Market day, market day. Yes. Market day, market day. Ah, market day Wednesday. Market day Wednesday is the first Wednesday of every month. The first Wednesday of every month is Melcom Market Day. Get 10% discount on all your purchases over 75 Ghana cities. Remember, it's a 10% discount with a Melcom Super Saver card. Malcolm Market Day Wednesday. Yara <laughs> or Malcolm. Terms and conditions apply. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna make most of it. It's a beautiful day. A day to share with you. You make my world go round Yeah, yeah, yeah It's really got me saying Nice girl Brings home happiness Brings home happiness Experience the wide range of top quality and affordable electronics, phones, Tablets, home and office appliances from NASCO. NASCO, bring home happiness.
Welcome back from the break, viewers. We are discussing youth entrepreneurship, and like you know, I I, intri I said earlier, you know, our guest for this evening, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Awumi, who happens to be the CEO of Cecil Consult Limited and an advocate for graduates working in the informal sector. Now, Mr. Richard E. Oben happens to be the deputy chief executive officer for the National Youth Authority. Now, before we left for the break, we were talking about structures, you know, and, 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 and I made the example of, you know, big time shops and all of that. Now, perhaps I should, I should have explained myself a little more. Mm. Every young person coming up with big dreams needs to start from somewhere because you need to gather capital. Mm. So the truth, at least when I, when I left the university, myself and my mates, the plan was to get into, you know, the formal sector, gather some money. I still have people who are still there gathering, you know. Mm gather some money and then set up the businesses that we dreamed of or the things that we wanted to do because how do you practically realistically come out of the university and set up a business you know these are the, the practical the challenges. challenges on the floor mm -hmm. so if we had these big businesses and things like that perhaps we could go there and, and gather the money no yes I think um, that is one mistake we are making we always want to start from the top to the down Really? instead of down to the top and we sometimes also try to depend so much on government to support us and that is one aspect too I feel we are getting wrong government can create the structures the enabling environment create the policies down for us but it takes us if only you want to be an entrepreneur the first and foremost thing is your creative and innovative ability and your money Capital. Yeah, capital will come. But then, you know, we always want it too quick, too soon. In entrepreneurship, there's nothing like too quick, too soon. It takes a journey. Mm. And it's a painful journey. And we must get to recognize that, that success does not come on a silver platter. Success comes through pain. And that is one thing the youth are not trying to recognize. And that is why we're going through what we're going through. We want to get it on a silver platter. Government should just create a job for us to go in there and work. Obviously, government cannot make you a creative thinker or an innovative thinker. You have to create. And then the environment is created for you to grow, to strive. Now, we are refusing to be innovative and creative. That's it. How we about we are being innovative and creative, but the environment the, is not enabling? How about that? It's not enabling. But then there are some, and there are most. For instance, the statistics that I get, 91% people are work, and percent of the labor force is in the private sector. How are they doing? Struggling. Of course. You need to struggle. You can't run away from it. If you run away from it, you will keep waiting as unemployment keep growing. You know, we don't want to go through pain. That is our problem. We want to make money quick. That is our problem. It took me almost 17 years to come this far, and I haven't gotten anywhere yet. Striving within the same environment. I started business with no money. I have to do many jobs to raise capital for 10 years before starting my business that has come this far because I had no financial backing support from anywhere. Then the question is, am I going to wait for government to come and give me money before I start? Any family member? Who from where? So I have to take my destiny into my own hands by getting any job that is reasonable to do, using my creative abilities, creating jobs, meeting needs of people, and people paying me for it. And I gave myself 10 years to raise capital. How many of you to want to go through that? Not a lot. Exactly. But then that is the way to go. You know, so if government is not there for you, and for that reason you want to stay, to remain poor, you forever remain poor. You need to make the initiative. Keep moving until the opportunity comes that to boost you up. Mm. The realities are there. We don't want to face it. And that's our challenge, I believe. Mm. Okay, now let, 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 let's, let's come to some practical things that people do to keep themselves busy. Now, here on the show, I have spoken to university graduates who are DJs. 
you know, I've spoken to somebody who is a mixologist. Mm. You know, essentially she deals with drinks mm. at events. Mm. You know, I've I've caterers, mm. um, um, people who are into desserts, cakes, and mm. like I have. This show has literally schooled me mm. on all the unexpected businesses. holes and businesses that present day graduates find themselves in mm. and have struggled and seemingly seem to be making it. Now, if there's something they all talk about, is the lack of money to start with. That's one. How, how exactly what you said, how, how, how to start mm. is always a challenge for them. Mm. Now, the next thing they talk about, all of them, is non-existent structures. Non-existent. And so, it's, it's, it's struggling to make it with no money. No, Even if there's no money and there's a structure to work within, it's okay. So, as soon as there's some semblance of making it, they are overpriced. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and all of that. Are we not developing a bad culture? That, that's my question. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry that I'm being negative, but I see it. These are, this, this is the reality on the ground. I mean, Mr. Ome is a great man. He, he had the patience for 10 years, you know, to gather money in. But the truth is that there are not enough graduates coming out of our universities, coming out of our polytechnics, coming out of, you know, all the other tertiary institutions that we have that have that kind of patience to gather capital for 10 years? You know, um, youth entrepreneurship goes uh, far beyond uh, monetary uh, Consideration. considerations. And I, I just wanted to put it this way, that it is not contingent on how much you're able to get by way of money as a startup capital to do that it's got so much to do with skills and understanding the culture that it entailed in building successful businesses and so if we when we talk about developing systems and prove, having this environment and systems in place for them I'd like for us to uh, focus more on what is there or what are the plans or what are the programs that are there to give young entrepreneurs the needed skills and also provide the right environment for them to try. Having said this, I'd like to uh, point to a few of them. Uh, take for instance the National Youth Authority. National it youth. has a lot of leadership and skills training institutes in almost all the regions, in fact, uh, more than the number of regions we have. Uh, the objective of setting these leadership and skills training institutes up is to give young people life-changing skills and also inculcate in them uh, leadership skills, which is essential in surviving in the entrepreneurship environment. The skills. The skills. So if you're a young person and you are watching me right now, the National Youth Authority has set itself up to equip a lot more young people with the skill that is required to understand the life cycle and the path that uh, startups go through. Uh, all of these are funded fully funded by the National Youth Authority. So uh, young people must have this basic understanding that it's okay to have an idea, it's okay to uh, take the first step to start, but it's very important to want to acquire some very relevant skills that will keep you in business when you start. And, and, and so that should come before the money consideration. If the person may have a business Preparation idea. The, the person may have a business idea. If they have some leadership skills and some training, they will understand that to start off, sometimes the very things we need to start off, we shouldn't have money, you know, check drawn on our account to have them. If the person has integrity, if they're able to build themselves up for people in their community to trust them, they can assess certain services 
on credit terms. If the person has an excellent working attitude, if they let these things and they take the initiative to let people who matter see them in the community in which they find themselves. There are a lot more people who also really want to support young business people, not with cash in most cases, but with direction and ideas. Mm. And the, 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 the key among the programs that we have designed to help young entrepreneurs is to make sure that we have a platform mm. which is what we already put out there that mm. we are going to set up industrial hubs mm. to nurture to help them acquire some of the very basic skills from those who have gone through it and mm. seen it all people like, Mr. people like mr wumi who have and share with them their experiences and the professionalism that is required to take off properly and to also have a smooth flight as, 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 you, as a as young you entrepreneur. That's but all. shouldn't this be part of the curriculum in every tertiary institution? Shouldn't we have these skills before we graduate? There may be um, a lot of the, to the best of my knowledge, most universities have some courses, some sandwich programs for final year students. And you see, some of these things, you must not necessarily have them as a unit-based courses. If you are a university student and you are in school, um, you may want to attend more conferences, business-related conferences, and most of them are often free of charge. People are invited to attend them. So, and on the university campuses and most of the tertiary institution campuses, a lot of the time you you find resource person invited by uh, specialized departments such as the business or economics or the administration department may look around and uh, invite some business. But oftentimes students don't take these engagements serious because they true. do not build up to their final great points. But these are where you get for free the relevant skills for you to try if, if you really want to uh, uh, be an entrepreneur. And you see, I, I want to also appeal to speak to those who unfortunately could not assess tertiary education if you could not and you can understand me with this language uh, you are not bad from assessing the kind of training that we have we really do invite people who have no education at, at all, all and equip them with life-changing skills uh, very basic some of them span of a period of two to three months you know and then you teach them repetitive skills such as uh, if say the person wants to do a bottling company mm. how to tie the lid to the bottle mm. it is not the kind of sophisticated skills that you know one needs to run that kind of business mm. so persons with such specialized focus to, uh, by way of uh, uh, getting themselves in business when they come to us it doesn't matter their level of education we are able to explain things and take them through the leadership training and in a language and in a culture environment where they can relate and understand us okay. that's great that, that's that's great yeah. but again this is me being negative please pardon me <laughs> again great on paper mm. But is it great on the ground? Let me tell you why I'm saying this, and I see you do that. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm saying this. Because we've seen, we've seen a couple of these initiatives and all these wonderful ideas, you know, and they have not really, 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 really worked. There's been what? I want to mention them by name. You know, I have a couple of them listed here. There's been GEDA. There's been what? What else? Help me out here. You know, there's the MELR. There's been the... Oh. I listed a couple of them here. There was the Busak Fund before, you know. Ghana's Employers Association collaborating with the trade unions, you know, to come and up the, with all the youth fund. We have the YES and <laughs> YEA. Thank you. All of them. I wanted to quote them directly from my my paper, but the page has escaped me. But okay. there's been all these initiatives, great on paper, wonderful ideas. Where did we go wrong? I hope um, you don't make the headlines tomorrow. Amma is looking for her papers. <laughs> <laughs> Amma, the thing is, you see, 
there are a lot of these initiatives and they are they have targets take for instance the youth enterprise support mm. it's just like i've already said understands that young people who have set themselves up for entrepreneurship really need some support and so if you're a young business person you really have to acquaint yourself with what it is that the youth enterprise support does oftentimes the challenge is not with the program living up to its expectation but people not knowing how to and what is in it how to assess it and what is there to be assessed that for me is the difficulty when i interact with young business people some of them tell me we didn't know that the national youth authority has training and leadership institutes we didn't know that this institute take people without uh, are taking money for the training they give and you have the youth employment agency which also offers stopgap employment for young people who really want to go into entrepreneurship but also want to learn on the job as employees some learn like you said when you and your colleague left school you wanted to go into so many business ventures and uh, you some of them decided to work it's it's also a good way of becoming a great entrepreneur when you work you get to understand the mindset of workers and the challenges they go through so when you set yourself up as an entrepreneur you understand the issues that fight employees for them to either produce to meet your target or produce below your target so it's very key and it's then you have the, <laughs> the national the national uh, um, the, the 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 national businesses for small scale uh, uh, and industry support which is also under the ministry of trade it's also there and you even have the rural enterprise uh, uh, program which is also a government program that targets young people in rural communities who, who want to set up uh, businesses mm -hmm. you see a lot of them but each of them has a target mm -hmm. now the task is for young people to understand the jurisdiction the objective of all these many programs it is not a bad idea to have these complementary programs mm -hmm. at the end of it all they all work with the national youth authority, national youth authority. to uh, make youth development uh, <laughs> progress in our country <laughs> yeah. okay viewers yeah. the, the whatsapp line you know if you want to join the conversation is zero two six zero eight four six five three nine that's zero two six zero eight four six five three nine so please pick up your phone and join join the conversation we will take a break at this point but when we come back we will round up the conversation and then i'll get to read some of the messages that you send in stay with us market day market day yes market day market day ah market day wednesday market day wednesday is the first wednesday of every month First Wednesday of every month is Melcom Market Day. Get 10% discount on all your purchases over 75 Ghana CDs. Remember, it's a 10% discount with a Melcom Super Saver card. Melcom Market Day Wednesday. Piero <laughs> or Melcom. Terms and conditions apply. It's a beautiful day I'm gonna make most of it It's a beautiful day A day to share with you You'll make my world go round Yeah, yeah, yeah It's really got me saying Nice girl Experience the wide range of top 
quality and affordable electronics, phones, tablets, home and office appliances from NASCO. NASCO, bring home happiness. Welcome back from the break, viewers. We have been talking youth entrepreneurship, and, and this evening, as always, I am I am getting educated. You know, I I'm always the first to to, to to support all the information. I hope I hope you are also doing that. You know, we need to educate ourselves on some of these topics before we sit back and complain all the time, like I'm doing, complaining, complaining, complaining. Okay, now let let's talk about the things we can do. To, first of all, let's start with the youth. You know. What can we do to get it right? And then I'll come back to you, Mr. Open. You tell me what government is doing to get it right. And then we can all, you know, at least we can make a, some headway, you know, with this discussion. Yeah, what can be done to get it right? I believe um, if our educational system can be really looked at, especially the vocational and technical education. Now, they are not well resourced because now if you your child decides to go to a vocational or technical school you know this societal stigmatization of certain aspect of our lives and our education is causing us a lot mm. you wouldn't want your child to go to a vocational school why because she she or he will be tagged not to be intelligent you wouldn't want your child to go to a technical school he or she will be tagged. And I wonder if government is even resourcing the vocational and technical institutions so well to make them very effective. The concentration is much to do with the secondary university education. Hmm. That is why we will have to be converting even our technical institutions into university, technical university institutions. Hmm. Why? Okay. We need the technical and vocational schools to strive. We need to get them developed because the skills, like he was saying, much of the skills can be developed in these schools. And so government could even target some of these schools with their policies that they have. Okay, get them well educated. So once they are even out of school, they are knowledgeable about some of these provisions government have towards the unskilled labor force. So once they come, they'll be able to take advantage of, of some of these things. If they are well-skilled, well-trained, and there is a lot of hype placed on these vocational and technical institution students, they come out being proud and being able to venture into the job market out there. Now you have a graduate who have done a Greek, desiring to want to sit in the office. Yeah. All right. You have a graduate coming out from an engineering institution desiring to want to get into the office. Why do you think they're doing that? It's because of stigma. They don't want to belong to that stigmatized environment called the informal sector. I'm a graduate and I'm going to work in the farms. How would it? My parents will even tell me, school, I mean, you've gone through all this. After all that school, After all that school you are in the farm. You know, so something must be done to improve the standard and structures within the informal sector to make it attractive so that we can break the societal stigma. Thing. That then can encourage a lot of people to want to get in there. You understand? So there's a lot to do with society, with education, with governance and all that to be able to improve that sector. That can create a lot of job opportunities for the youth. Else, the youth are out there Trust you me, there are a lot of people who have skill sets tailored towards the informal sector, mm. but will not want to get there because they'll be stigmatized. I went through it, and so I know what I'm talking about. The stigma is so strong. 
So there are some graduates you realize their their skill set, their desire and passion is skilled towards skilled towards jobs in the informal sector. But to be stigmatized, he would rather stay at home to remain unemployed. Mm. You know. So these are some basic things we are ignoring, but it's killing us. Mm. We are always turning to policies by government by this, but forgetting about that the thing. The role we play. The role we play. You know, so I always come up to say that our society has been structured, designed, and programmed to ensure that we remain poor. And it is keeping us remaining poor because we all want to be in a formal sector. Meanwhile, there are opportunities in the informal sector. Can't we add value to them and improve them mm. to create an enabling environment? For instance, our president was talking about creating decent jobs mm. in the informal sector. What is he talking about? He's talking about decency, value addition, mm. because that is what will attract people. Germany is doing that. They're placing a lot of value on informal sector, and it's creating jobs. You know, so if we can place value and structures in the informal sector, does not necessarily mean government should put up structures like physical, physical structures. structures. No, no. <laughs> it's about regulating your business operations. You don't have bookkeeping now put bookkeeping in place let somebody manage the business for you mm. so that at least once things are well booked mm. down productivity will increase income will increase you'll be able to then open other branches mm. or expand and employ a lot of people mm. now we need people who are learned to help the informal sector people to well structure their business in terms of bookkeeping, management skills, and all that. Mm. This is why I advocate that graduates, mm. when you get in there and you help that person improve his business, mm. trust me, you might be even well paid more than the job you might find in the formal sector. Mm. Let's ignore societal stigma and transform our country by venturing into the informal sector. Into the informal sector. That's great advice. That's, that's great advice. It's all been. <laughs> uh, as an, as um, someone working for the National Youth Authority, I, I must say that I'm appalled at the grotesque level of inequality between uh, young people who mm. have some good education and mm. those who have no education mm. at all. Mm. And our emphasis going forward is to identify the those who do not have education or probably have not as high education as others mm. within the youth bracket mm. and, and and equip them with life-changing skills uh, oftentimes when trouble breaks uh, which causes all of us some form of headache the people you find at the heart of all of this most often are young people and most of them are those with very little or no education and it is so because the system as it is structured now hasn't provided a lot of opportunities for them so by uh, being caught up in the unemployment uh, web with that kind of natural or the natural challenges of not having uh, the benefits of formal education mm. compounds or mm. even increases their rate of engaging in violent acts and all of that so at the authority we have programs for the social development of young people and also the economic one of which we are discussing now now my final i don't know if these are my final words to you on this program <laughs> no. uh, to the young people watching us is that uh ask around if you really do not know what to do with your lives look for our uh, metro and district uh, directorates mm -hmm. or if you're in a region or the regional capital look for a regional offices mm. and if you are lucky to be in Accra then you have 
also the national office. Mm -hmm. Approach the National Youth Authority. If you are in business, let us know the mm -hmm. challenges you are facing. And mm -hmm. if you're really also not in business and you're looking to uh, put yourself to good use in our economy, we have systems to advise you on the choices that you make. That you can make. You can make. Okay. Right. Let me read a few of my mm -hmm. messages and then if there are any questions, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can answer them. Okay, this one says, since Amma, you are doing a great job. I pray that we the youth would watch and listen to such programs. Greetings to you and all the drivers in Ashaiman from Paddy, Vice President of Ashaiman Cooperative Transport. Of course it's from Paddy. Paddy, hi. Thank you. As usual, I never miss your text message on any of the shows. Thank you so much for being, you know, our number one, our number one you know, communicate. Thank you, Paddy. Okay, this one says, I feel your program. You are wow. You are no size. Well, thank you. Thank you. I wish I had said more about what we are, you know, what we are discussing. But that is also great. Thank you for, for that. Okay. This one says, students need to think outside the box. While in my final year at KNUSD, I made up my mind to work at the private sector. I did my national service with Guinness Ghana. After service with Guinness, I set up my company, Agenda 21 Company Limited a wholesale distributor of beverages. I have employed five people already. The company is just 10 months old, but it's doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. And his name is Victor Malo. Now, Victor sends us actually a picture of, of his company, Agenda 21 Company Limited in Kumasi at Kasi. Mm -hmm. Well done. So, yeah, uh, well done, Vic, Victor. Vic, the multiply well effect done. for dealing with someone like Victor uh, is so great. So if Victor is watching and listening now, I am very interested in his business and how we I can scale it up. Here. I have his number here. I'll give it to uh, you. All right. That's, I'll, that's I'll great. I'll, I'll make contact with him. That's great. Right. I like that. That's great. Okay. So this one says... Oh dear, that's my phone. Okay, yeah. This one says, some of us have the capital, but want more business ideas in venturing into the informal sector. Not necessarily skill set ideas, but business in general. You didn't add your name. You should have added your name. You know, anybody wants to address this? Yeah, I think um, that is a good one. Um, you have the money, you don't have the idea. Um, Creativity and innovation, as was not trained from the school, have led to some of these things. Mm. But then, once you, I think there should be a form of like an incubator mm. for ideas mm. to be shared. Mm. For instance, I by nature can just come up with business ideas like that. Mm. Okay, and so if um, as part of your program, if there could be an incubator of people who have ideas to want to share. Mm can come and leave those ideas there then he for instance can then fall on mm. side people go there and pick up the idea because the whole idea is to create jobs yeah. so if you have the money and there is the idea out there for you to pick up why not you get it mm. so i cannot direct him directly to me because we are we want to serve a bigger mm. populace yeah. and so i rather look at the government agency creating the forum mm. for some of these and the people like us mm. who have ideas that we want to share can go drop such ideas over there and run. For instance, one idea I had was like a graduate, you get into your suit or well dressed up. You take your shoe shine box, I mean a suitcase filled with polishing materials. You go to like a well established hotel, for instance, have an agreement with them. Business people come for meetings. They don't carry some of these things on them. Mm -hmm. They have laundry services at hotels, but do they have shoe polishing section? You understand? So you are employed over there to be polishing the shoes so of plant. Just like they have the laundry section. Laundry section. Shoe polishing section. 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 You understand? Okay. And the person is well packaged. There is a graduate like organized. Like we've seen old foreign movies. You you know, well dressed, well dressed guys, and you polishing. doing that. No hotel will reject you. Mm. And imagine you are polishing about 20 to 30 shoes mm. a day. 
Of course, in one charge for yeah. the ragged looking shoe, yeah, shoe yeah, shine. In it, it, in, in, you understand? In New York, you have well dressed people yes. in suits who yes. do that. They, yes. they have what looks like a staircase makeshift mm. kind of mm. uh, shade. Right. And you have to step on it, mm. you sit comfortably, mm. and then they do the shining, mm. and you see them in their nice suits yeah. and yeah. Yeah. They dress yeah. like exactly. they're going to work in a bank. Yeah. Yeah. Packaging yeah. and branding is what we need mm. because, trust you me, the businesses that we look down on here mm. in US, in UK. We go do the same businesses and we feel comfortable. What do, what's the difference? The difference is just packaging, mm. branding, branding, customer service. They apply these skills. Mm. Okay. We ignore them here. Okay. And we are doing the same job. The mechanic here, for instance, is equally as good as the mechanic out there. Elsewhere. Okay. But then we have a brand of being dirty as mechanics here. True. And they have a brand of being neat True. as mechanics. That's, just the so we have a problem with packaging and branding and if we can work on that i think we can, we go, can go, go far, far. Yes. great let me read a few of the messages okay this one says amma it's a big trap to go into the informal sector if you really want to be an entrepreneur i call it the rat race you may never get out of the public sector i have money now but i'm afraid to move on his name is Safo from kumewu so this clearly, is so clearly we, we are witnessing a scenario where a lot of young people responding to this program have raised money. But the challenge is the, the preparation to step out there, mm. and which is why we continue to make the call that it is the right time to assess the kind of leadership training that we have and the mentorship programs mm. that we have yeah. at the authority. Mm. If they come to us, we would sit them through and do all the risk analysis yeah. and take away the fear factor yeah. so that they can step out. Yeah. <laughs> because you are so used to having money, if it's the 21st yeah. or the 22nd, you are so used to having money sit in your account exactly on the 21st. So you are able to budget. Or oh, maybe next month I will do this. I will do that. You can take a loan. You know that every month I can take this amount of service. But the risk. Let, me, let me chip in this. Um, to all those who have the passion and desire to want to go in to entrepreneurship um, I call it it's a positive risk taking avenue the challenges are there you only need to build up the courage the courage do your research very well do your analysis very well and also make provision for failures okay. Don't run away from that. You know, That's a real possibility. You know, the real possibility. It's, it's, it's a you know, banker possibility. Yes. Okay. Make provisions for all this. We and know that shocks. Shocks, <laughs> yes. You have to have proper yeah. shock absorption. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some shocks in the system. In the system. That will put you to test. <laughs> that is it. So you will not always get a smooth sailing. Okay. That one is a guaranteed issue. Mm. You know, but then to also succeed, that is the venture. That's the way you need to go. Need because to go. if you don't go through it now, you will anyway go through it when you go on pension. Okay. You know, because when you go on pension, you get your gratuity. Most of the times, you want to open up a shop and do some sales. Yeah. It's entrepreneurship. That's right. Okay. You understand? So you better face get that. Face it now or face it later. Face it now or face it later. <laughs> okay. That's it. Let me read some more messages. This one says, hi, I'm Godfrey from Techiman. We, the youth, nowadays are ready to enter into entrepreneurship. But all the problem is financial aid. So how can we set up? Because I have a project development, but capital to start with. And then he ends with the multiple dots let me read a few more then you can box all of them together this one says good evening to you and to your panelists please i want to ask the deputy ceo of nya if one wants to assess funding support training how should he she do it if you have a business idea which involves a huge capital is it advisable to go in for credit facility as a young entrepreneur and his name is Lamine from Owa now he sends the last one please your program is more educative and we encourage you to do more on financial education kudos to Pan-African TV well, thank you thank you so much please have this in mind as well okay this one says um, hi Amma you are looking good today so thank you I support what your guests are saying. Youth of today wants, wants already made jobs. 
no one is ready to take a risk i'm ken solo from takpade the oil city so you have a lot of support there mm -hmm. okay this one says um an SHS graduate and I have decided to create my own business but my father wants me to enter the university and search for a white color job how can I convince him his, his name is Daniel mm -hmm. okay this one says okay hi I'm a, I'm a 25 year old university graduate I have a lot of business ideas which I believe can be beneficial to many young people. I developed a clothing brand six months ago, and this is currently making waves across Africa. Yet nobody is ready to fund my business, no ideas. Please ask your panelists what I should do to boost my business. His name is Selom in Accra. Okay, so, you know, let, 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 if we could address some of some I think of these much has come to his end issues. in terms of ideas and stuff. Mm. So um, those who really have managed to um, set themselves up and have some challenges with raising fund, um, again, it is going to be helpful if they approach us for us to look into what uh, specific uh, support and which specific areas and they need those kind of support mm. at the end of the day the concept of supporting young business people is excellent but how to go about it is very important if mm. you get it right mm. then it gives meaning to the concept mm. if you get it wrong uh, it defeats the purpose, the purpose of having that system in place so it is on not as easy and on the face of it, you can prescribe some solutions, but if you sit with the person who sent the message, mm -hmm. as we get a conversation around it, we get to know the details and then uh, uh, see which areas we can bring in experts to can I direct support them. them. to your office? The National Youth <laughs> Authority exists, has a mandate, okay. and the mandate is to develop, help develop socially and economically the youth of ghana mm. so it falls right within the mandate of the okay. national youth authority so please, all if of you have any such challenge to have a conversation with us please go go, go there tomorrow <laughs> please ask for don't ask for the secretary i beg you <laughs> ask directly for me let me give you his full name mm. so we, once you get there tell them you are coming from watching the couch tonight that that should be your sure ways of entering you know his office directly now his name is mr richard e Obin. Mr. Richard E. Obain, he's the Deputy Chief Executive, Deputy Chief Executive Officer for the National Youth Authority. Please go there, go there. When you get there, just tell the secretary, the couch, the couch, and you'll be allowed to see, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, Please, good. any, 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 you want to say anything because it's, yeah. it's time to go. Okay, so to the gentleman who spoke about the dad wanted him to, yes. he has he a business. SHS. SHS. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the societal situation that we're talking we about. about. You know, um, parents are part of it, society is part of it because. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the dad will want him to attain that height so that he will be recognized that my son has gone up there. Uh, I would advise him not to be disobedient to the dad. He should just go through the university. Once he's out, the idea is not dead. Mm -hmm. He can still implement it. He's still young. Okay, so he should go through because he's still going to enhance his knowledge. Yes. Okay. Education the, is good. It's good. So he should go through the university because um, I went through the university. Anyway, I came back to wash cars. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> I'll, enc I'll encourage you um, <laughs> go through it, get to the end of it. You will get to learn much about customer service, marketing, branding, and all that that you can apply to improve upon that knowledge skill that you have that you want to implement so don't um, disobey your dad mm. just go through it mm. and then come out and then you can start all right okay, i went through start. the secondary school i stopped went through the technical school went through to the university mm. came back and i'm washing cars and i'm good to go so i'm encouraging you you you, you can make it Ab so absolutely it. Be any right. final words before we go final words 
you are done. Huh. You are done. You know, you are, you are just re ready for the for, 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 for the success in your office yes, world. Yes, yes right. absolutely. Well, you won't believe who just walked into the studio while we were having this discussion. You know, the the immediate past, immediate past. Please mm -hmm. tell me your position now. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mr. The, uh, Prince, deputy CEO, deputy of, CEO of, of the YEA, you know, immediate past the YES, YES, yes. You know, I think you know it's unfortunate he can't he can't join the discussion because we are done. But we are doing this again, and right. next time he's joining us, you okay. know, with, with the knowledge that that he also has. Right. And you can tell us all and, he did wrong and, and you what know, you do the right. The seat that I <laughs> occupy, he once <laughs> that's, that, that's right. Great, so, yeah. great, and great. from there, move to YES. YES. He's got a rich history with youth development. Great, so great. It will be good to have him seated. Seated here. No, I'll get, him, I'll, get him, I'll get him a special chair. I'll get him a special chair. So next time you are doing this, it will be a full house That's with great. past executives present. Oh, I can't wait. Easier. So we'll do that next time. Viewers, it's been it's been a, a great conversation as always. You know, I I so I don't know how we do this, but we always manage to bring the the best you know the best people. To, to deal with all the hard questions and they never get upset that's great but that's great that's great so we will do this again like i intimated but next time with a fuller house you know he's already given us his consent by smiling as i'm speaking so next that's time it, 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 it would be it would be a fuller house thank you thank you 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 entrepreneurship is a great thing like mr Wumi was talking about it's, it's a great thing we can't develop our country whether the government is getting it right or wrong we as citizens can can get it's right. See you again tomorrow. Bye.